What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Lunar, and uh, <laughs> I just wanted to watch this video with y'all. Ain't no way. Everybody know Boosie. Boosie, a uh, a a hood legend, and uh, this video and his black interviews always go on viral. But he said, "This is the brokest he's seen." <laughs> the u.s vlad tells people it's their own fault vlad always man if it wasn't for boosie i probably would have stopped watching vlad years ago but let's get into this which this is the brokest the u.s have has been the u.s is going through it right now all my people that are struggling i see y'all bro i know it's hard i see y'all <laughs> Last question. You said this is the brokest you've ever seen in America. Yeah. I've never seen, especially since I've been home. Cause you know, I drop films, I do all kinds of stuff. This is the brokest I've ever seen in America. It's more Fortune 500 companies going bankruptcy than I ever saw. Sales are the lowest in everything that you putting out. People just don't have the money mm -hmm. to do this extra shit and pay bills. Yeah. You yeah. have to pick a choice now. Yeah. You know, I know this and I, and people saying, you don't know uh, this still this and it. No, because I'm an entrepreneur. That's true. Listen, bro. I was grocery shopping and stuff. I used to be able to get, you know, the necessities and a little bit of extra for about a hundred and twenty thirty dollars with a hundred and twenty dollars bro i could only get like the juices sandwich meat bread couple chips and fold like two to three dinners bro to just make and i and i better hope i grab a pack of noodles because once that's out that's it bro it's so expensive to live bro and then if you add like doctor bills, sickness, gas, bro. Oh my gosh! Like I DJ, so like people like the club ain't been open. People ain't been getting married. Like it's really expensive out here for no reason, bro. For no reason, bro. Like it's insane how much stuff. Like when I was at the grocery store, bro, milk and shit. And I'm in the south, so the south is already. And I'm in the deep south the south is cheap as hell compared to the rest of the world and if i can't take a hundred dollars and get right in the grocery store i can't i can't even fathom what it's like in like new york washington dc california utah oh my god oh my god i look god. at sales i look at everything the world has never been this poor I don't know what it is, Vlad, but people just don't have it. Well, Even I mean, people in, who inflation, to, inflation is the biggest we've seen since the 80s. Yeah, even people who used to love to have a good time, they can't. I even seen, I'm sorry to cut Boosie off, but I even seen that somewhere a statistic said that it's worse now than it was in the Great Depression. And we've seen what happened with the Great Depression, but because we're modernize it's not as chaotic i guess like how to how everything is set up in today's time it's not as chaotic as it would have been in you know the the 1920s which is insane to think about but i do know it's like what was the worst since i've been alive like what the recession back in like 07 08 09 and you know they said it's like below with that you know and i just remember how crazy it was back then <clears throat> so for it to be like that now is worse than that what is happening and then like even if you take video gaming companies and stuff which a lot of that is their own fault they're not making they're trying to they're chasing the spending revenue that people were doing 
in the uh, pandemic and people was at home. So people wanted to do more things, wanted to, you know, they was being more recreational, they was playing more games, people was watching anime and stuff. So all these companies is chasing what the pandemic did, but people were stuck at home. So it literally, like, you can't chase something that people are stuck at home when now that everybody's back in the workforce. So what they do, they start raising everything. And video games are giving you less for more. Charging more for games, which I know the cost of video game production has went up. But then you look at companies like From Software with Elden Ring and Armor Core, those games are 60 bucks still. They ain't raised the, they ain't raised the cost of their production. And they do stuff. And I love how let's just take Elden Ring their their art style instead of making something super realistic they made it you know they fit the art style and they fit it in the budget of what they can create and then while they was creating Elden Ring what they're doing working on Sekiro working on Armor Core 6 they drop Sekiro drop Elden Ring drop Armor Core 6 drop the uh, Elden Ring DLC like they still have motion and they still doing everything normal they are not chasing what Elden Ring did during the pandemic because to them it may be a glass bottle but then you take companies like Bungie who people were playing more in the pandemic and stuff and now they're just up and everything up and everything up and everything chasing up the stuff chasing up the stuff and then they laying off everybody but then you have companies like Elden Ring not laying off everybody and then keeping everything smooth sailing because they're not letting the success of the pandemic get to them and i think that's what happened around literally with all these fortune 500 companies they're literally chasing the pandemic but then the world is raising everything and folks getting broker people don't want to work well not really people don't want to work jobs really don't want to hire nobody if you look at it jobs ain't hiring nobody and then they say they hire somebody and you need all these fucking you need to you need to be able to have 30 year experience fresh out of high school and that's insane or it's it's just weird how they're operating chasing inflated success because everybody was at home and now they're chasing numbers and they're, they're not hitting these stocks that they inflated themselves they got imaginary numbers as they want to chase themselves and they're not hitting these marks themselves and so it's excuse me it's ruining everything because they're chasing after something that is imaginary put it like this because the pandemic people were spending more let's just take let's just take ea electronic arts people or some, what's some what's the game there about call of duty activision activision seeing what's the call of duty that dropped during the pandemic cold war everybody bought ps well people was trying to buy ps5s but cold war sold the most call of duties ever let's just say that i don't know i haven't checked it but because call of duty cold war sold the most during the pandemic the next year when they make call of duty vanguard is so tremendously less and so as a business standpoint because they made let's just say a hundred million let's just say one billion during the pandemic they made one billion during the pandemic next year they have their revenue they want to go up 30 percent, so they want to make one point uh 1.5 billion next year to go up in revenue and that's what's what's that 2023 right well everybody goes back to work during 2023 right nobody has time to play games so people so when call of duty vanguard comes out or what is it modern warfare comes out during 2023 they sell not 1 billion but they sell 900 million copies they went below their revenue mark their revenue uh mark that they wanted to go to so because of that those imaginary numbers that they told the board they was like oh we sold 1 billion so we could sell 1.5 billion next year because they told their circle their circle of their board or whatever the fucking dudes that don't even play video games 
that runs Activision because the game developers told, not even the game developers, the CEO of Activision told that we could sell that much more next year. Because they didn't hit those imaginary numbers, they're laying people off. But usually, before the pandemic, Call of Duty would sell 500 million. So they sold, they used, they used to sell 500 million every year. Pandemic hits, they sell 1 billion. The next year, they want to sell 1.5 billion, but they sell 900 million. They still did better than what they usually do because more people bought into PlayStations and Xboxes and stuff. So because a lot of people are thinking, well, shit, I'm at work. But let me go ahead and buy it so I can have some when I get off of work. Or people, casual gamers now, who didn't even play on consoles. They played on their phones and shit. Now they had the PlayStation and, and the Xbox that they bought during the pandemic. Now they're like, shit, I already got this. Let me fucking just have, let me just buy the next Call of Duty. I fucked with the last one during the pandemic. Let me get this one and then on the weekends I play it. That's how it should be. And that's how it is how regular people, but because they put that imaginary number of 1.5 billion and they didn't hit it, that's what's happening with the layoffs. Now, it's a trickle effect in the gaming industry. And every every big AAA developer of the gaming industry has done that. And that's what I think is just happening with the entire world, especially in the United States, of like revenue, like the pandemic ruined and it even happened with anime like all these anime companies started dishing out more anime because of the pandemic and then now that shit ain't hitting because they got too much on their plate trying to dish out more because everybody was at home watching anime and shit they had a playstation 5 oh shit crunch. get a free subscription to Crunchyroll when you get a playstation or xbox they selling dragon ball z shit i ain't watched dragon ball z since i was a kid let me see what super talking about let me buy the new season on xbox I'm at home. You get what I'm saying? And every company is going through that. And now, instead of paying employees and stuff, they're trying to make the CEO and them more money. Or people up in the in the fucking head of the visions of all these companies more money by trying to sell more. But then every we just, everybody like us regular people are the ones by like getting hit for it. Can't do it anymore yeah i know people who love to have a good time like people just don't have it i'm talking i've never seen nothing like this before like uh man it's the world in a, it, the world in a, it's in a bad situation right now I, I don't know what we can do to change it yeah i mean look we had to lay off our whole writing staff so like vladtv.com the website I mean, yeah. we, we talked about this, like the, 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 the articles, the news, Yeah, we shut that down a couple months ago just because we couldn't afford to keep it up anymore. Yeah. You know, the advertising rates have gone down, traffic has dipped and people are also, you know, getting their news on social media for free and the whole article is there. They right. go to the website. I had to make a tough decision. I mean, one of the girls that worked for me had been with me, with me like 13 years. Yeah. Like it, it hurt, maybe even longer. Yeah, 13, 14 years. It, it hurt. You know, and I gave people severance packages and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I remember you too. You was like, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do I... it. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. I feel sad about doing it, but ultimately I have to run, you know, I have to keep the business afloat. And that part was just, you know, not our core business. It was always always kind of a side hustle. And after a while, a side hustle is going to go away. Right. And you got to get back to where the core is. But I want to say this. I right. had to do the same. I had to slow up on my films. Yeah, exactly. I had to, man, it was, man, it, man, it, it's making me hustle harder, but man, if, if you don't, if you don't have no hustle right now in these times, the crime rate finna boost, man. Yeah. The crime rate finna boost because it's not just us who providing jobs who don't have it. They don't have it in the hood, neither. Like I'm getting worried, like they just people who hustlers, people who always had it, don't have it anymore. Like and they they bro, people just ain't got it no more. We in a bad position in the United States as far as capital. Yeah. I'ma say that like we in a we in a real bad position. Uh every day you see a company going bankrupt. Every day. Yeah. Well, every and, week. Or, or massive layoffs. 
every week you see somebody, a company you've seen for years, and they back to back, back to back. Well, yeah. This this restaurant, this bed bath to be young. Every man, I'm talking about everybody. Uh, Red Lobster just fought Baker. Red Lobster Express. Red Lobster. I'm pissed about Express. <laughs> I love them fucking t-shirts. Yeah. I'm pissed. Oh, I'm pissed. Oh, I'm pissed. <laughs> oh, I'm pissed. Yeah. Man. And look, and the the reality is that when it comes to almost every company. You know what the biggest expense for almost every company is? What? The staff. The staff. Yeah. Staff. That's the biggest expense. Staff. And the so workers, when you the lay employees. them off, who don't know how to do crime, what they do? Fraud. Yeah. That's when the fraud, that's when the fucking fraud gonna come. That's when you're, you're separating marriages. That's when all this shit come. Right. Because money brings problems. Money brings problems, bro. I don't know what the fuck we need to happen. We might need another COVID. We need something. I don't give a fuck. We need something because if you got a company right now, you're gonna have to make decisions. Yeah, yeah. We had we had to make decisions. I can't pay people the same amount that I've paid people. You know, even appearance fees had to slightly, you know, yeah, go down. Yeah, man. The same you know, thing and, with but me. you know, and people I talk to, they understand. They're like, no, no, fuck that. No, they're like, we get it, Vlad. We get it. Certain people that used to get appearance fees don't get appearance fees anymore. It's like, listen, if you want to do the platform, I can't pay you this time. If things change, I got you. But the reality is reality. But here's the important part about this. I want everyone to listen very carefully. Because this has happened to me. I remember in 2000, I had a booming business and employees and a big office. Now spending it as fast as it would come because I figured it would keep coming forever. The dot-com crash happened, wiped me out. This situation that we're in right now is not going to last forever. Yeah. At one point, the economy will go up, money will come back and so forth. So I want everyone who's going through it right now to listen very carefully. If you're fucked up right now, and you have no savings, and you're worried about paying your rent, paying your bills, you have to realize that part of this is your fault. It's your own fault for not putting money aside, for not investing your money, for spending it as soon as you get it, for buying unnecessary things, for buying clothes, vacations, cars that you can't really afford, being in a house or an apartment that's way too expensive, and so forth. You have to live conservatively, because when the- I don't know about that, Vlad. <laughs> I see, I knew he was with a while up, bro. It ain't a lot of folks, folks. Some folks live paycheck to paycheck, and they, they just can't save. They, they just can't, bro. Like, they have to, you know, do what they gotta do. Not saying that's right, but it's the situation they in. So he kind of wild on this one, but I understand like the people that you know live frivolously, doing X Y Z. You know whatever they doing, I understand that. But he wild on like everybody. these situations come and they will come. Whether it's the economy, whether it's a health issue, whether there's an accident, losing your job, things out of your control or things that are in your control. Make sure that you have a financial base that you're prepared to live off of for a year, two years, three years down the line. When I went broke and I was living on people's couches and I was essentially homeless, I said, the next time I get some money, this is not going to happen to me again. And right now, when things are fucked up, I have a financial base. You have a financial base. You're not going to lose your house. You're not going to have to sell all your cars when you're taking a, the bus. You don't have to sell a bunch of... You may have to sell some of your things. That's okay. We all got extra shit that we don't need. Yeah. I got a big watch collection. If I have to sell a few watches, oh well, boo-hoo. But I have been conservative year after year and built up my savings, built up my investment accounts. I've showed you my investment accounts. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not just talking. You know what I'm talking about. I built them up to the point where I can weather two, three, four, five, ten years if I need to, wait for things to come down. And during these times when you have money, cash is king. Those Richard Mill watches that were 350 a year ago, you can get them from 150 now. Yeah. If you these stocks are low sometimes. These, these, these various things, these sales are getting better and better. 
if you have the money, you could actually take advantage of situations like this. But know that if you're fucked up right now, and it's okay that you're fucked up, internalize it. Don't think it's not your fault. It is partially your fault. In fact, it's probably mostly your fault. Internalize it. Realize the mistakes you made when things were good and live your life different. For when this does happen again and you're older, you'll be able to weather it. The way I'm weathering it, the way Boosie's weathering it. Don't feel like it's not out of your control. It's not. It's been in your control. You built this house. You didn't go and buy a $10 million house. Let me tell you something. I interviewed Grant Cardone in his $40 million Malibu mansion. Yeah. On Billionaire's Beach. Yeah. He spends $400,000 a year on property taxes. Yeah. Four hundred thousand a year just to keep the house, and he hasn't been there in a year. You know, Airbnb, you know, the, the house out or nothing. If you manage your money and you know what you're doing, you don't have to sit there and hustle and scramble or whatever else. If you had bought a house for twenty million dollars and your situation was fucked up right now, and you owe the property tax, and everything else like that, you may have had to sell right now. But instead, you're a conservative. Bought a piece of land, slowly start building the house. Built it up piece by piece, piece by piece. So now when things are hard, you ain't got to sell shit. But when you went to prison and you had the big mansion with the mortgage, what happened? Lost. You lost it all. Three years and you lost. Exactly. You learned from your mistakes. I just bought 26 acres day for yesterday. Good. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You learn from your mistakes. You knew not to overextend yourself this time around. Yep. Yep. And that's why you are where you are. That's where I am where I am. Because, oh man, if I was fucked up at 50 right now, ooh, it'd be the older you get, the more fucked up you'll be. Yeah. Man, let me tell you, most of the people that bring me my Postmates and DoorDash are people that are older than me. And I, and I feel bad for them. I feel bad. Me, me doing Postmates at 50, 60 years old, that, that, that's a sign of bad decisions. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing against people who do it. It's just you don't want to be there. And that's all I want to say about that matter. So what it is, Boosie, man. And we're going to go check out your mural that you have in the back. Yeah. You know, that wasn't there last time. We're not going to do any more house tours, but I just do want to see the mural. 